Hey guys, Justin here. Before the video, I just wanted to let you know that all the footage in this video was taken from a marathon live stream we did on the main channel, where Michael did seven final exams from seven classes. If you're interested in watching the entire stream, it will be linked in the description. Hope you enjoy. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out. What is our goal today, you might ask? Well, we're going to go through sample final exams in seven different math classes. So calculus one, two, and three, and then linear algebra, differential equations, abstract algebra, and then we'll finish off with real analysis. So I have really no idea how long this should take, but I think it should be a bit of a marathon. So I think that'll be pretty interesting. So just like our last live stream, for every $50 in the Super Chat, we'll be doing a backflip. And I think that's probably it. And then we'll just get started. Okay, so let's look at this first problem. So this comes from Calculus 1. And that would be the limit as x goes to 0 from above of x times the natural log of 3 times x. So let's recall that as x goes to 0 from above, well, x is going to 0, but then the natural log of 3 times x will be going to negative infinity. So this is an indeterminate form of type 0 times infinity. So let's maybe write that. This is a 0 times infinity indeterminate form. And so that means that perhaps we could use L'Hopital's rule if we started by rewriting this either in the form of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. I think our best bet is to write this in the form of infinity over infinity. Okay, so let's get to it. This will be equal to the limit as x goes to 0 from above of the natural log of 3 times x over 1 over x. So something like that. And now this is of the correct form. This is of the form infinity over infinity because the natural log is going to negative infinity, whereas the one over x will be going towards positive infinity, but that's okay. Okay, so now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So that means we're going to be taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. That'll leave us with the limit as x goes to zero from above of three over three times x in the numerator. That's by using the chain rule. I guess we could expand this numerator a bit so that we didn't need to use the chain rule by writing that as natural log of three plus natural log of x using logarithm rules, but that's kind of like the same sort of difficulty. I don't think you save much. And then the derivative of 1 over x using the power rule. We can think about this as x to the minus 1. So this gives us minus 1 over x squared. Okay, so notice this 3 and this 3 cancel. And then where can we go from there? Well, we can multiply this up. This will give us the limit as x goes to zero from above of negative x squared over x, but that's clearly gonna be equal to zero. That's because this x right here cancels with this x right here. Okay, good. So first problem down. Now let's look at this next one. And so that says to find all real numbers a and b such that the following piecewise function is continuous and differentiable. So let's maybe notice what we need for continuity. So for continuity, we need the left and the right hand limit that occur at this like sort of switchover point to be the same. So I'll just put we need the limit as x goes to 3 from below of f of x to be equal to the limit as x goes to 3 from above of f of x. But f of x has a different maybe name in each of those places. So when we are below 3, f of x has the form a times x squared minus 1, whereas when x is above 3, we have f of x has the form b times x. And then we're continuous in both of those places, so we can just plug the 3 in. So let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have 3 squared times a, that's 9a minus 1 equals 3 times b, so 3b. I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. Notice that's the same thing as 9a minus 3b equals the number 1. So we've got an equation that relates um, a and b. 
And now let's look what differentiability gives us. So for this thing to be differentiable, we need the sided derivatives to be the same. And so that means I need to be able to take the derivative of this ax squared minus one and the derivative of this bx, and those should be equal at three. So let's take the derivative of ax squared minus one, that gives us two a times x, set x equal to three, and that should be the same thing as the derivative of bx, which is just b, set x equal to three. Of course, like there is no x on that right hand side, so there isn't really anything to do, but I think that's okay. Okay, so notice that's going to give us something like this. We have 2 times 3, so we have 6a is equal to b. Okay, nice. But now we've got a system of equations. We've got 6a is equal to b, and we have this 9a minus 3b equals 1. So we can plug this version of b into our first equation. That'll give us 9a minus 18a from using this second equation equals 1, which tells us that negative 9a equals 1. In other words, a equals negative 1 over 9. And then of course we can plug that value of a maybe in here and we can figure out b. So b is equal to six over nine, well negative six over nine, which is negative two over three. So those are our values of a and b that give us a continuous differentiable function. Okay, nice. So let's see, I think our next uh, problem will be a little bit more um, I don't know, theoretical, I don't know exactly what the right word is, we're going to derive a derivative rule. So it's a little bit of a what I'll call a calculus one style proof, so it's not really that complicated and we're not going to do it like quite as technically as we'll do things further down the line. So let's say we'll prove the derivative rule for the arctangent. So the derivative of the arctan of x is equal to one over one plus x squared. So this is good because in calculus one, you generally learn about derivatives of inverse functions and you also work with implicit differentiation. And this is maybe a problem that attests both of those. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's set y equal to arctan of x, and then notice under this setting, our goal is in fact to find y prime. Okay, but now let's apply the tangent to both sides of this equation, and that gives us x equals the tangent of y. But now we can apply the derivative operator, and by the derivative operator, I really mean the derivative with respect to x operator of both sides of this equation. So that'll give us one on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, it will give us the secant squared of y times y prime by the chain rule. The derivative of the tangent is secant, secant squared, and then the derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. We're assuming that y is our dependent variable depending on x. So let's see, that means that y prime equals one over secant squared of y. But we only know how to express x in terms of tangent of y, not in terms of secant of y. So there are several ways to get to the end, but I think maybe the quickest way is just to use the or one of the Pythagorean trig identities that writes the secant squared as one plus the tangent squared. So let's do that. This is just one plus tangent squared y, but then we know that x is equal to the tangent of y, so this is the same thing as one over one plus x squared, which is exactly what we wanted to end up with. Okay, so that's good. Now let's take a couple of antiderivatives. So let's say our first antiderivative will be the antiderivative of x squared over the square root of one minus x dx. So for this one, we're gonna use something called rationalizing substitution. Okay, so let's maybe let u equal one minus x. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. That means that du is equal to negative dx, but that also means that x is equal to one minus u. 
But these three things are enough to totally change our x integral up here to a u integral. So let's see what we get. We'll get the integral of 1 minus u quantity squared, that's from the x squared, over the square root of u, that's from the square root of 1 minus x, and then negative dx. So something like that. So let's maybe bring that minus sign out. Sorry, that should be negative du. So let's bring the minus sign out and we'll see that we have u squared minus 2u plus 1 over the square root of u du. Now we could maybe move some things around and maybe separate this out into a couple of fractions and that'll leave us with something like this negative u to the 3 halves, so that's because we have u to the 4 halves over u to the 1 half. Then let's see, that'll be plus 2u to the half, that's because we've got u to the 1 over u to the half, and then minus u to the minus half du. And now from here, we'll simply use the power rule. So that means we're going to increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. So we'll have negative u to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 fifths. So that'll be this first term. And then plus 2 times u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. So that's 2 times 2 thirds. So increase the exponent by 1, divide by the new exponent. And then finally, minus 2u to the 1 half for the last term. And then finally, we need a plus c because this is an indefinite integral. Okay, then we can put this back into our terms of x and we're good to go. So we've got minus 2 over 5, and then let's say u is 1 minus x, so we've got 1 minus x to the 5 halves, plus 4 over 3, 1 minus x to the 3 halves, and then minus 2 times the square root of 1 minus x, and then plus a constant. And I think that would be a nice final version of this. So for our definite integral, we'll take the integral from 0 up to the square root of pi over 2, so that 2 is outside of the square root, just a heads up, and then we'll have x times the cosine of x squared dx. Okay, so here we'll want to do another u substitution. This u substitution over here is just for a rationalization process. But the substitution over here is, in fact, because we've got a composition of functions. So we're reversing the chain rule. Notice we've got x squared inside of cosine, and essentially its derivative is outside up to a constant. Okay, so let's say here we'll take theta and set it equal to x squared. That means that d theta is equal to 2x dx, but that means that x dx is equal to 1 half d theta. Okay, so that means my x dx term can be replaced with 1 half d theta, and then my x squared is simply theta. Next, let's notice when x is equal to zero, that means that theta is equal to zero. So that's by this rule right here. And then when x is equal to the square root of pi over 2, we see that theta is equal to, well, it's this term squared. That ends up giving us pi over 4. So square root of pi squared over 2 squared. Okay, so that takes care of our whole substitution, and we're gonna be left with a one-half out front, which we get from this one-half. Then we'll have the integral from zero to pi over four, and then this turns into the cosine of theta d theta. Okay, nice. So let's see, taking the antiderivative, we have one half sine of theta because the antiderivative of cosine is sine, evaluated from zero to pi over four. But then sine evaluated at zero is zero, whereas sine evaluated at pi over four is the square root of two over two. Um, so we might as well write this as the square root of two over four in the end. Okay, so I think that's good for that one. Now, let's look at a fundamental theorem of calculus part two type problem. So let's say we wanna take the derivative of this function which is defined in terms of an integral. So let's say it's the integral from the tangent of x 
all the way up to x squared of 1 over the square root of 2 plus t to the fourth dt. So let's say we have something like that. Okay, so well, we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus that we're good to go if we get something in the form, the derivative with respect to x of a times or up to x of something dt. We don't quite have that now, but we almost have that. So what we'll do is just pick any real number. We can pick any real number here because this function is continuous everywhere and we'll split this integral up with respect to that real number. Okay, so what I mean by that is we'll turn this into the derivative with respect to x and then the integral from the tangent of x up to zero, we might as well use zero, of one over the square root of t or sorry, that's two plus t to the fourth dt, and then plus the integral from zero up to x squared of the same thing. Great. I guess a big clue here that you wanna use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, instead of just taking the antiderivative and stuff, is the fact that this interior function inside of our integral is probably not integrable. I, what I mean by not integrable is it doesn't have an elementary function description of its antiderivative. Okay, so now let's, switch the order of integration here by picking up a minus sign, and that's gonna give us the derivative with respect to x of the integral from zero to x squared of this thing. So the square root of two plus t to the fourth dt minus the integral from zero to tangent of x of this thing. So there we have that. And now we can apply this rule kind of in concert with the chain rule. So you wanna think that these functions that are inside the upper bound of integration are really being composed inside of our function defined in terms of integrals. Okay, so that means when we take the derivative of this first one, we'll get one over the square root of two plus x to the eighth, because x squared to the fourth is x to the eighth, that's a fundamental theorem of calculus, but then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of this x squared, that's two x. So again, like I said, this is from the chain rule inside of FTC part two. And then we'll subtract this from, well, we can do the same thing here. We have the square root of two plus tangent to the fourth x down in the denominator and the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared in the numerator. And that in fact would be our derivative. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. The link to the entire stream should be on the screen now, as well as the link to the next exam. We will be posting one every day this week. So make sure to check them out. And that's a good place to stop.